Hello YouTube, Tim here. Okay, here are our three release aids that I'm going to mold. Here's our amazing mold putty compound, parts A and B. You can pick this up at most craft stores like Michael's or probably Hobby Lobby. I don't know about Joanne, but you can get it online too. In any case, it's as I remember, the list price was about $20, and you can go quite a lot farther if you use coupons or find it on sale. It's a very handy medium. As you've seen, I've made some very nice... Let me show you before I mix this. This was my first mold. I learned an important lesson is that you want the narrow parts to be on the top. You know, that should be obvious, and thinking back on it, I knew that. I just wasn't thinking when I did it. So my second mold, it's slightly tilted, but that's okay. I just put something under like a pen under one side and that holds it totally level and this makes perfectly good thumb rings. I then took one of the finished thumb rings from this mold and I made a new mold that's completely horizontal so it doesn't need to be propped up and it's closer to a complete finished ring. This is great for turning on thumb rings and I really like it. Plus now I can do as many as three at once if I really want to. That is not what we're here for today though. Today, I'd like to go ahead and try and mold these suckers. Let's start off with the uh, the most complex of them, this one right here. So I just take parts A and B. I like to use a rolling method. I'll squish them like this, and then I'll roll it up. See, like that. Squish it, and then roll it up. And that's how I'll blend it. Squish it, roll. You can knead it like dough, but honestly, this is a, a pretty effective means. By the time you've done this five or six times, or maybe ten times, it'll be completely homogenous, which is what you're looking for. You do have to work somewhat fast, because this stuff sets up and becomes rubbery fairly rapidly. At that point, you won't be able to do very much. You'll be able to cut it, but you'll need to use really sharp blades and so on and so forth. Okay, so... Let's just get it roughly into the right shape. That's pretty good, that's pretty close. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flatten it out a tiny bit, and then what I expect to happen is it's gonna squish out. Just push it in, and now I'm just going to kinda of have this squidged in all around it. particularly right there over the the hole for the release or where the string goes that I want to be built up nicely okay before it sets I'm gonna move some some silicone over to there so it didn't look like there was enough there there we go I mean that's really it I'm gonna leave it slightly lipped because when it sets you're just gonna be able to stretch it slightly and pull stuff right on out. So as you can see, I probably could have been a little bit more economical with the material. I used a little bit more than I needed to, but come down to it, this is fine. Something that I like to do at this stage, before it sets too much, is if you'd like to trim it, this is a good time to do it. This is a really good time to do it. So you can go like this, and I'm not taking it off even to the point where it touches, I'm just taking it off slightly, slightly higher than that. So we can go around and just gently... Typically you'll want to cut towards the object. Right now it's very soft, so it still doesn't matter too much. But this stuff is going to set momentarily. In fact, I can feel it getting thicker right as, we're, as I'm talking to you. Okay. Done there. Let me see if I can get this lump in the center off. I mean, looking pretty good, right? When I pour this, when I fill this, it's gonna be, it's gonna spill out a little bit. But that's okay. A few minutes with my, uh, with a, a sander or with a file, and we'll get this perfect. Now let's just see if we can't get this last section over here to be a little bit more finished.
great. Looks a lot nicer, huh? And remember, it's never going to be perfect, but you want it to be a little bit closer because otherwise it's harder to get a nice flat edge on the top. And once it's finished, it's a lot harder to shape. Once, I mean, this stuff is completely set and cured. I do love silicone, though. This stuff is wonderful. It really, really makes life easy. So now if you want, you can even cut away excess material on the outside because we don't need an extra half inch over there, for example. We can cut away quite a bit here, too. That'll also increase the flexibility of the silicone mold in those places. And that is important. Because ultimately, we're going to need to uh, pull it apart. That's great. So now, we just let that sit. This here, I think we can probably, even though it's semi-cured, we still have enough time where we can go and mix up a new batch over here, equal parts. So let's see. I like to make balls and then you can compare the balls, the size of them. That's about right. Okay. Let's mix that up real quick and see if we can't do the same thing with one or the other. Okay. This is nearly mixed. This is great stuff. I mean, it's food safe. You can use it, or at least that's what I've been told. And I believe it says that on the box. Once it's cured, you can mold gelatin in it. You can mold chocolate in it. I've done stuff like that before, and it's really great. It's a really cool material. Let's do this other one, the biggest one. Okay, and now we're in the same situation where trim, trim, trim. Let's just make sure it's flush up against there. A little bit of overhang is okay because of the flexibility of the silicone. I want a little bit more material over here because it just looked a little tiny bit too thin. Too thin is also bad because it can tear. It's not likely, but the more you use it, the more likely it is to tear. I'm just going to cut a section off here at the end. I'm going to cut in here. Now we're left with another chunk of... Uh, of silicone that we can use on the final one. That's pretty much perfect. Okay. I don't know if we'll need any excess, so let's just go ahead and try it and see if we do. We can try and mix up some more quick. But let's see. I think if we move material from one point to another, we'll probably be fine with this with this amount. It might be tight, but I think we can make do. And this nearly cured stuff, we can just put in unimportant places for reinforcement around the edge and side. That'll be fine. We're not concerned over much with how strong that is or how it blends because it's just bulking up the outside. Like I said, not terribly important spots that we're putting it in. Okay, this looks good. Likewise, we're doing the same thing. Taking that the razor blade and just cutting along the, the top, or right next to the top. I'm going to add a little bit more right back here near the uh, 
near this where the string gets caught because it doesn't feel like it's quite right. Okay, let's try cutting once more. Perfect. Now it looks and feels good. It still looks like it's a little bit scant in the center here. So I'm going to repack that and recut that. Cool. There we are. Three thumb rings, three molds. In the future now, if we need them, let me bring the camera in now. So again, we might get some jiggle or camera motion. So there you go. I mean, that's that's all there is to it. We're going to be able to then cast these suckers one at a time, however, in whatever quantities we require. And that's very cool. So thanks for watching, YouTube. I appreciate it. If you like this, subscribe. If you'd like these rings, I'll probably start selling them on the Etsy shop. And uh, look forward to feedback. Thanks for watching.